All right, welcome back to the morning meeting. I want to take a moment to explain a phrase that I've been using uh, throughout the week. I, I started it actually on Sunday night on the radio. It's corporate communism, uh, and I've been using it in two very specific instances. First, with health insurers who use the government to protect themselves from real competition. We're all watching this play out uh, in front of us. You probably know this. If you don't, they are the only American business, along with Major League Baseball, of course, that's completely exempt uh, from the Sherman Antitrust Act. Uh, they also have ma major lobbies in Washington preventing any form of choice. We saw what happened uh, to Senator Wyden's efforts to create choice for everybody on the exchanges. Just natural competition. Forget the public option. No. Uh, and then there's the banking industry. Uh, the beneficiaries of an ongoing $24 trillion taxpayer-funded bailout that supports the entire system. $24 trillion. Not that we may not get some of that money back, we may get a lot of it back, but that is national capital that is being sucked into a broken banking system at the expense of the rest of our country. They continue to use too big to fail as blackmail to the taxpayer in order to get them or us to provide them with our tax money. I, my phrase, corporate communism, uh, I know makes some people uncomfortable. Uh, some argue it's just an easy insult, uh, but let's be very clear. I use it with very specific meaning. Uh, it is a system that takes resources from the citizenry and redistributes it to a tiny elite. I use the phrase corporate communism because I cannot find another way to more accurately convey what is happening in our nation today. That a handful of weak, uncompetitive, outdated companies and industries are purchasing control of the American political system in order to stay in business using their cronyism. It is coming at the direct expense of the rest of us in this nation and is a total betrayal of everything that represents America. Let's bring in Mark Ames, editor of ExiledOnline.com. His latest column, America's Dead Souls, Eight Reasons to Hate Our Billionaire Bolsheviks. Uh, Mark, particularly interesting because uh, you spent, what was it, 10 years in Russia, eight years in yeah. Russia, uh, watching their economic system make its transition. Uh, very briefly, because we have a lot of ground to cover, why is communism as an economic model, a meaning a model where there is no competition, there is no choice, uh, laziness and weakness is rewarded through, uh, again, either the use of character assassination or, or intellectual property theft, whatever it may be, to, to, to reward yourself at the expense. Why is that a problem? Well, I mean, first of all, you start, uh, you have an economy that creates things that nobody wants or needs, but the economy sucks, uh, you know, all of, all of the resources out for these things nobody needs. For example, Volga cars. They're still being produced even today, which chokes off any innovation uh, in the rest of the Russian economy. So now they have to import everything. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's the problem here. I mean, to paraphrase Orwell, what we're getting here is all men are created equal, but uh, a handful of men are, are created $24 trillion more equal than the rest of us. And the problem is, it's, it's going it, it's to turn this country into a second rate country. And unless we get back to our values again, we're going to turn into something more like, uh, more like what, what Russia saw, which is this kind of small handful of billionaires and oligarchs and elite sucking off and parasiting off the rest of the country. Um, and just soaking it for, for all it's worth yeah, and looking I, for all it's worth. Uh, you wrote about a couple of the, of the, the, the most notable parasites, uh, United Healthcare CEO Bill McGuire. Uh, bonus to me, they say healthcare is not profitable, not for some people, but certainly for Bill, maybe not for shareholders sometimes. Uh, but Bill made $125 million as a bonus. Sounds like a lot of money, except for the fact that he also uh, bonused himself more than $1 billion personally running a health insurance company in stock options. Yeah, on the one hand, you have 45,000 Americans dying a year from lack of health insurance. And on the other hand, you have this guy, you know, on top of it, he backdated his stock options. Which basically means rigging the stock options so yeah. that they're guaranteed That's to be worth money. That's what the whole money. basis of, of corporate communism is, though, right? Is rigging the system so that you always win, you always take everything for yourself, and there's never enough for the rest of the people, and there's never enough, frankly, for the rest of the economy. I mean, I would think that you know, the, the whole American economy is not health insurance and the finance industry. There are a lot of other parts that are actually much more productive and, are and innovative. And are forced to compete tooth and nail to survive from one day to the next. Yeah, well, you know, the problem is I don't think, for example, Silicon Valley, I don't think they're quite as, they don't have their tentacles in the government in Washington, you know, quite as deeply and um, on such a just a dark, horrible level, uh, manipulative level as the finance industry and health industry. So they're getting choked off. And we may 
not have the world's best uh, high-tech industry in five or ten years because there's not going to be any resources And for there's it. no capital. You talk yeah. to venture capitalists, there's not money to invest. All these things are happening as we watch this This is happen. a finite amount of money in any yeah. economy. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, well, unless you can print lots of it. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, Contessa, what else Thank is going on?